Good afternoon everyone. Welcome to this next episode in our Lead Courageously series. This series spotlights our health and social care academy ambition, Lead Courageously, and is a space for us to explore the role of courageous, collective and compassionate approaches to leadership. My name is Amelia and I work on the communications, integration and engagement team at the Alliance. And today it's my absolute pleasure to welcome Sarah Redmond, one of our Chief Officers. Since her time at the Alliance, Sara has had key policy roles in our health and social care integration and self-management programmes. Previously, Sara has worked at Scottish Government as a researcher in the Equalities and Tackling Poverty Division and has worked in a number of frontline roles supporting people who have claimed asylum, survivors of sexual, sexual violence and, and with people experiencing homelessness. Sara's work involves working closely with Alliance members, developing innovative partnerships that show how change can be achieved and promoting the role of the third sector as a key inventor and partner in realising Scotland's national health and wellbeing outcomes. Sara, thank you so much for taking the time to be with us today. My pleasure. It's, yeah, so great to have you on. Um, as a start point, and I hope, you know, we'll get into more of the nuances of this, but um, what does leading courageously mean to you? I think the words that spring to mind are being humble, so recognising that you won't have all the answers, um, that you're not there to have all the answers. I think it's also about understanding that discomfort will be part of that journey, that um, it might not always feel like a comfortable space to be in. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think ultimately for me it's about knowing that, you know, leadership is, is needed when um, something when change is, is, is being required, when, when perhaps uh, an honest conversation, um, you know, something uncomfortable needs mm. to be said and it's then about, you know, being willing to step into that space and, um, you know, make your voice heard. Yeah, I, th I think that's so beautiful, and I think especially the um, humility aspect of that. When when I think about you, and, and not to put you on the spot or embarrass you, that's something that stands out so prevalently. Um, and before we kind of go on, I, I wonder in that uh, if you would agree, because I think when when you allow for humility, you're meeting somewhere. At, where they're at and also you're providing that space um, as you say to have that disagreement or bring in different perspectives um, so yeah and and then I suppose kind of what you're talking about in terms of having that space for disagreement um, it takes a lot of courage that I think mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting to me that you know this series isn't just about leading it's it's about that courageous aspect of leadership as well yeah and I think I think the thing that's often struck me is that, you know, there, there's a there's a saying, you know, what what's gone before won't necessarily serve mm. you for what you need, mm. you know, going forward. Mm. And and I think, um, you know, when you think about leadership, it's often in the space of of you know moving into a future yeah. state, moving into yeah. something that is then unknown, and sometimes um, I think. Because of you know our psychology as humans, you know we're looking for certainty, we're looking mm -hmm. for knowns, mm -hmm. we're looking for the answers to be really clear to us. When sometimes those aren't that yeah. clear, or it's only the clarity only comes when you can have the conversation and you can see you know the differences in in, in views. You can you can disagree well, yeah. Yeah. Um, and also I think there's something about recognizing that. It's dis the decisions we need to take are not just about what's good for humans, but actually we need to think of ourselves as part of a much more wider system of, of nature and the planet around mm. us. And, and actually there's sometimes um, something about being courageous by saying, well, you know, where do we need to stop doing things? Because, yeah. you know, at the moment we're maybe doing harm yeah. because of that. Yeah, yeah, the really holistic approach, I suppose. Mm -hmm. um, and sorry, sp talking about the unknown, for you, it's so interesting to me when 
when you talk to people who are in positions of leadership, kind of the like, how did you get there? And um, maybe that was an unknown for you too. Did you always see yourself as as a leader? Especially, I know you know you worked within the alliance previously. So was that something that you expected to happen? How's that kind of journey been for you? No, I never expected, nor nor necessarily saw it mm. as part of my path to um, being a leadership role. Yeah. Uh, or or you know, um, the leadership role, I guess, within yeah. an organisation. Yeah. Um, I, I guess kind of looking back, I've always been someone who felt if something needed to be said, it needed to be said. Um, and I never felt, I never find it comfortable to just agree with the views in a group because, um, you know, they were friends, or it was yeah. uh, that was kind of seemed to be the the widely held view, um, particularly around issues around kind of social justice and and kind of social inclusion. Those those kind of matters always um, seem to kind of burn quite strongly inside mm -hmm. me. So I I I've I've felt uh, I guess there's been leadership dimensions to mm -hmm. roles I've had in the past, mm -hmm. but in all honesty. I just, I, I just never thought it was for me, and I never thought I wanted the, the, um, the pressures, <laughs> yeah. to be honest, yeah. of leadership, yeah. particularly at this stage in life with you know a young family, yeah. and um, so no, I mean I definitely uh, um, this you know this current role was not in my, um, my in your vision as yeah. per se, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and in terms of like finding that balance, because I imagine you're still finding that, you know, mm -hmm. it's something that's evolving yeah. as uh, it sounds like to me, you know, you're, when you, when you come as a leader, you're bringing your whole self in that sense. So um, balancing that aspect of, of kind of all your responsibilities outside of the job, mm -hmm. how do you find that? And um, yeah, how do you find that evolution within yourself, I suppose, uh, as a leader? I think, I, th I think it's 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 definitely been a journey, mm. you know. Um, I, I guess it's like with most things, you know, that the, the person I am today is not the person I was mm. when I started out in the role, mm. and um, you know, definitely has been you know strong learning along the way. Yeah. Um, there's times where it's felt really uncomfortable. Yeah. And I've felt like I've not got the balance right. Yeah. Um, but I also think having you know the 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 life I have outside of work helps with the person I'm trying to be in work. Yeah. In that, I find parenting a really humbling experience. Mm -hmm. um, you know, sometimes when uh, I, I feel like I've got something wrong or I've maybe said something in a way that I'm like, oh, you know, that I didn't feel a very respectful way to speak to you know one of the children or. Um, you know, it's it's there's nowhere to hide with parenting, yeah, and yeah. I think you know sometimes that's quite a good um, it's it's a, it's a it's a helpful reminder that you know ultimately within work, and I and I say this you know um, in you know within work spaces is you know I I see what we're trying to create in the organisation. You know, we are a community. Yeah. You know, the fact that we're saying well, there's a leader or leadership within an organisation suggests there's community. There's mm -hmm. others within that. Yeah. And um, so, you know, really the most important you know currency we have within an organisation is the relationships that we have, you know, amongst ourselves. Yeah. So I. I think, you know, realising um, as a parent I often get things wrong helps me be a little bit more humble in work and recognise, you know, if I've got something wrong I can say it, I can name yeah, it and yeah. uh, and be honest about that. Yeah, and, and that it's okay and, and I think you're so right, like that filters down and um, it's so tangible I think working here, you know, when I speak to everyone there's a real kind of shared vision and shared focus and, and that ability to, to be able to have conversations and, and trial ideas and, and things like that and um, certainly for me I'm very kind of uh, really recognise that that comes from, from the leadership team you know I think as you say it's, it's all a moving part but if that tone is set kind of further up um, 
then it, it definitely filters down. Um, is there anyone, Sara, for you that kind of uh, has been that person for you? Anyone that kind of has inspired you to, to, to be the leader that you are today? Um, I think there's been a few, um, I, I guess a few people along the way have, have stood out to me when I've, I've, I've noticed that they've, say, they've, they've behaved in a way that has felt um, like it was okay to, to show up as yourself. It was yeah. okay to, um, you know, to, to seem very human in the role. Um, you know, I think uh, a, a kind of public figure um, for me was um, Jacinda Ardern when she was Prime Minister in New Zealand. Mm -hmm. And I remember mm -hmm. thinking, gosh, there's a really strong, um, courageous woman mm -hmm. in a role which I'm sure, you know, highly pressured. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and lots of difficult decisions where there's going to be trade-offs. There's going to be, you know, a trading off between, mm -hmm. you know, many good things, mm -hmm. um, or or trying to lessen harm as opposed to maybe remove it completely. Or, or um, and I think her, the, the type of leadership she seemed to demonstrate, the things she said, the way she said them, um, you know, it was really. Uh, it was it was reassuring and really welcome to see that yeah. in in a public figure such as that, um, and I think you know even looking at you know within the context of of you know Scotland and and the the sector that we're in, you know I've been really fortunate with you know having you know really strong mentoring and, and support from mm -hmm. you know previous and um, you know current people within our senior mm -hmm. management team where they demonstrate that kind of approach as well. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. So I think I think having that, having those visible uh, representations of of um, you know the, a style of leadership that can be collegiate, that can be yeah. you know humble, that can be um, a, you know, and courageous. These things aren't either ors. You know, yes. they're definitely um, you know there 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 are many things we can we can embody at different points. Yeah, and and I like for me, it's it's so fascinating in terms of like. Yeah, how it, the, the relationship of how it coexists, right? So being very vulnerable, but at the same time you're having to make decisions. And you know, I'd imagine, especially for you, that's kind of a fascinating dynamic to watch within yourself. Um, how those things all align and how they shift. And yes. yeah, yeah. I um, I was thinking about it before we were having this conversation, and I was trying to think, you know, what. I guess what have I learned along the the way over mm -hmm. the last few years, and I I, I do think um, it's very easy to get in the um, habit of reacting, yes. and you know you react to, to whatever comes into the inbox or whatever kind of presents itself um, as as a priority. Yeah, and when I notice I'm in those uh, moments of reacting, often you know, the emotion is triggered, you know, yeah. to accompany that, things can feel, you know, you just have to, you just have to make a decision. And stepping back and being able to be a bit more reflective about, you know, you know, what am I noticing? What's, uh, you know, um, how am I uh, contributing mm. to this? What, mm. what what do I need to do? You know, how, mm. step back and, and um, you know, observe it a little bit more. Yes. There's often a lot more space to do that than we perhaps think. Um, even in times of crisis, maybe especially in times of crisis. Yeah, and I think that's that's so courageous, right? In terms of like when something feels like you're on the train and there's no getting off, it's like actually hold on a minute. How can we, you know, just shift this pace a yeah. little bit, take taking that breath and um, and as you say, step outside a little bit to gain perspective. Yes. Um, do you think in in terms of like gaining perspective? Uh, I know a lot of people, people that we've had on previously, and, and you touched on it um, just a moment ago about allowing kind of a space for different opinions and different perspectives and, and, and that space for disagreement. Um, I suppose how conscious, how conscious is that for you, um, kind of navigating that and, and bringing people in with, with kind of different differing opinions? Yeah. It's, I, I think it's a work in progress mm. that, um, I, you know, I'm aware um, something that I've, I've, I guess I've, I've been noticing is that you know change takes it takes 
uh, some time. It takes uh, sustained attention. Yeah. You know, it's something that if you really want something to happen, you need to kind of stick with that over over a period of time. And it's rarely brought about by just one action. Yeah. Um, so some things that that you know, I, I guess. Uh, you know, myself and, and Susan as, as Joint Chief Officers we've been aware of is that the kind of culture that we, we, we are looking for will take time for us to uh, nurture, yeah. you know, it's and, yeah. and it takes, you know, uh, different actions. So for me, um, and because we're an intermediary organisation, it's, it's both been within, you know, thinking about the diversity and, and the the diversity of opinions, the diversity of life experiences, the the ways in which we can encourage a culture to disagree and to um, and and to step step into those mm. spaces to say, you know, I think we could be doing differently here. I think we could be doing more in this um, on on these issues than we are. But it also takes, you know, because of our um, constitution, it takes that engagement with the diversity of our membership mm. as well. And it's it's something mm. which you know I recognise. I feel like. You know, as um, as leaders, we have a, an accountability to the staff team, to our board, but more widely to the mm. members that we're here mm. to represent. So, um, you know, it's it's. I feel it's kind of one of. I guess it's one of the things that reassures me sometimes in in um, the journey is when if people are willing to to step forward and, and disagree or offer a different opinion. Mm. Um, it's it's quite a reassuring place to be at yeah, because um, yeah. it, it suggests that they feel people feel able to, yeah. and I also always you know can accept the assumption that I will not be right a lot of the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that that safety I suppose mm -hmm. to to come in and be like we're all in this together, and um, for me that's so much of of kind of what the alliance is about. Um, mm -hmm. And on that, you know, could you? Speak a little bit more about, because I know your background, obviously you worked uh, with people in terms of like that lived experience kind of side of thing, yeah. with people with homelessness and, and things like that. So how much has, has that in your background informed kind of like the importance of, of seeing that lived experience carried through now that you're in a kind of position of leadership? Yeah, or oh, vital. I mean, I, th I think it's been the one thing that has... Um sometimes intentionally and perhaps not always uh, consciously been a, f a flavor of you know why I've made a decision to either mm. leave or stay somewhere um, mm. and you know so for me I guess you know uh, the, the the challenges that the harm sometimes that are done because of the way in which our services are designed mm. um, was you know really uh, acute to me when I was growing up, and you know at the, at, from personal experiences of seeing um, you know family members where you know they were experiencing mental health problems, but also um, alcohol and drug use, and because of of that kind of dual diagnosis, you know they were pushed from one service to another or were left without any, and you know so seeing that and seeing the um, I guess the stigma and the challenge of trying to. To, to, to speak up about those issues when um, you know it felt like a, a, a difficult thing to talk about and a difficult thing to be able to advocate for really kind of drove me into to working in frontline services and um, and you know I worked for some really great organisations and often the what I found really frustrating was coming into contact with um, you know mainstream services where there was a, a kind of a door was closed or a a barrier was put up to someone's eligibility to access it, or perhaps there was, you know, judgments kind of around, um, you know, some of the, the young people I was working with, and it was kind of, you know, uh, labels put onto them, and um, and I think that frustration of feeling like uh, that that moral injustice, where you're thinking this should, we shouldn't be making this so hard for people, um, was ultimately what kind of led me to. to uh, apply to work for Scottish Government because I thought well where else could you make yes. more impactful yes. change yeah. Yeah. and um, the culture of the civil service didn't work for me I, I, I didn't feel it was um, at the time anyway somewhere where um, you could be that person to step forward and say well I don't know that I agree with this I don't think that's the, the right way to do things and um, you know so, so kind of uh, at that point decided to come back into the, the third sector 
and with the alliance and um, and I think I think that's one thing that the, the, the main uh, reason why I've oh, stayed here as long is that is that that core purpose around recognising that you know decisions about people should be made with them mm -hmm. and you know informed by them. They, mm -hmm. they you know they, they you know people ha we all have a right to mm -hmm. have a say in, in decisions mm -hmm. which affect us and. Mm -hmm. Um, and and even more than that, you know, we we'll, we will we make better decisions that way. You know, we, we devise better solutions. We um, you know we come up with better approaches through it as well. So it just it it just always makes so much sense in my mind. And um, so I think it's it's been a fundamental kind of thread throughout mm -hmm. the journey for mm -hmm. me. And I mean, this is just obviously me kind of imagining for you, but like it must also be so helpful when you're making that decision right knowing that actually it's come from a collective yeah it, it, it's not you know going back to what you're saying it's not just that personal because we you know we can't hold more than our own perspective in yeah. that sense so um being able to bring in everyone absolutely i, I imagine would be quite reassuring yeah yeah absolutely i mean i i, I think that is it, it's it's a it's probably sometimes a bit of a dilemma for me because, you know, the nature of working for an organisation like the Alliance means you get opportunities to be part of um, groups and work mm. and, um, you know, discussions about the future of health and social care, about, um, you know, programmes and approaches to, to support um, uh, to support people and, and, the, and their rights better. Yeah. And equally, though, I recognise that I, it's not my voice yes. that is the voice that yes. needs to be heard, and um, and so I, I, I think I, I, f I feel that that you know I carry that awareness with me that yeah. you know the, the role is not to speak for people, yeah. but to try and highlight the way in which we need to design the process so that people can speak for themselves yeah. on on these issues. Yeah. Um, but you're absolutely right. I think where we where we can then be, you know, highlighting and pointing to, or, or you know, facilitating that, um, it you know it, it, it reassures me that that's you know that's where I need to be speaking up, saying those things, um, highlighting where it's not happening, advocating for more of it, um, reminding what what meaningful involvement looks like mm. and where it's at risk mm. of being tokenistic. Yeah. Have you seen quite a big shift in that, Sarah, since you started working within the Alliance, but like particularly as, as your role as, as Chief Officer, have you, have you seen a, a cultural shift, I suppose, within the wider health and social care landscape? Yeah, yeah, I think, I think uh, even more, more wide than that, I think across the whole um, kind of social policy mm. landscape, I think, you know, it's much more accepted as a as a principle of, of good policy making that you involve people yeah. um, you know m most directly affected uh, by that that policy as part of it yeah so I think I think it's definitely recognized as a principle as a as a um, foundation of what good you know policy making um, and, and uh, designer services mm -hmm. looks like mm -hmm. I think we've still got a long way mm -hmm. to go for it to really be um, a, a genuine and um, empowering process mm -hmm. um, and I think that you know I think that's that's it offers different challenges just now because um, I think you know where, where there's where there's a feeling that we're already doing it well within Scotland and um, if people themselves don't feel that their involvement's very meaningful then um, you know it's it's sometimes a, a a difficult conversation to have and to try and highlight that actually we need to be doing this in a different way. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, it's so, so interesting. Um, to slightly kind of um, pick up on what you were saying a little bit earlier, you know, we mentioned that you work alongside uh, Susan Young very closely. She's our other Chief Officer of Operations here at the Alliance. And um, that's quite a unique uh, situation, I feel like, to, to be partnered so closely in that role with mm -hmm. someone. How do you find, how do you find kind of co-sharing co that, that responsibility? 
Yeah, it's it's not as it's not typical. I think I think you know it's um, it's definitely more the exception than the rule. Still, although I am curious, I I almost wonder whether it will become much more familiar yeah. over time. Yeah. Um, particularly because I think you know we we recognise that we need to be working to shared outcomes you yeah. know across organizations it's not just about whether or not you know one organization is 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 delivering really well and performing well you know when you're in the the, the space of you know public services public investment um you know social change yeah. it's it's um you know th these are these are you know complex um uh outcomes that, mm. that you know there'll be lots of different contributions to them mm. so i think um for me, a shared chief officer role matches my leadership style quite mm. well. Um, mm. I think, uh, you know, I'm, I'm very aware of the accountabilities I have. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, having a, a joint chief officer role means for me that there's that, that shared accountability we both hold. Mm. And, um, you know, the decisions that we take uh, rest on both of us mm -hmm. so um, you know I find it really reassuring yeah. that when there's big issues that yeah. need to be uh, decision needs to be made you know uh, we will um, discuss and um, and disagree and look at you know things uh, from both our perspectives mm -hmm. Um, and I also think it's helpful that we're quite different personalities yeah. for that reason yeah. um, that you know if we were perhaps too similar um, we might tend to agree too quickly yeah, on things, yeah, and um, yeah. so I see that as as, as a as a strength yeah. um, in a leadership role. Yeah, and I think you're so right. Like, it's fascinating to me when we can we can say like you know very much to what you were saying before. Just because it was done this way doesn't need to means it needs to kind of continue mm -hmm. and and coming in with that different approach and seeing the the strength and having that collaboration and um it, we had our annual conference recently and it really when we we're kind of in the throes of discussing how that should look we we're talking about networking and and really this idea of like okay how can we have a networking space where we're we're forming connections and and it's kind of competitive isn't the right kind of word that i'm exactly looking for but you know kind of like let's remove that thing of like we're in competition with yeah. each other to like we're actually we're, we're striving for the same goal yeah. that's the most important thing how can we reach that together and i, I you know I, I think that's very much similar to kind of what you and susan have have got together which is amazing yeah um, and, and wonderful to kind of just have been like, well, let's let's give it a go. And, yeah. Um, uh, and Sarah, in terms of kind of uh, wrapping up, is there anything um, going forward that you have in your vision specifically for the alliance? I don't know. Maybe you don't approach things that way so much. That you know, how kind of far in advance can you look? I suppose. But also, is there anything that you you guys are working towards in in that way? Mm -hmm. Um, so for me there's there's some foundational things mm -hmm. that that you know is always uh, needs to be core to us as an organization I think um, you know our, our pillars of you know being a strong membership organization mm -hmm. making sure that mm -hmm. we are um, you know that, that, that we're there uh, working together with our members you know you know making sure that the, the the offer of membership with the alliance is, is really strong and, and clear and reflective of the challenges that we as organizations mm. and, and groups are facing at the moment at, at, and the opportunities and um, the other I guess just foundational thing is making sure you know coming back to the point about our you know the ways in which the platforms that we we, we try and create and the the ways in which we try and um, uh, enable people to to participate in designing policy, influencing policy, um, you know, ch you know, designing what mm. what reform around health and social care looks like. I never take it for granted that we're doing as well as we need to be doing in that space. I mm. think kind of really, you know, um, you know, holding ourselves to account on those two things. But the other thing for me is I I, I want it to be really clear what we're for as well, what mm. we're what we're there to try and um, uh, you know facilitate. Uh, more of mm -hmm. so um, you know I, I you know I see us as being there to try and uh, you know design programs encourage you know collaborations you know to be clear about what are the things that are not being said that are not being addressed 
and and how might we collaborate with others on um, you know creating some change in those mm -hmm. directions um, you know we like you were saying before there's 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 a you know we've got a really strong third sector we don't necessarily need to be um, in competition with with what already mm. is strong and good about what we offer we've also got a range you know we've got some really great you know public services and and um, yeah. you know uh, infrastructure um, it's not good enough yet mm. and, and I think you know too many people aren't being able to enjoy their rights so you know for, for me it's about making sure that we're you know we just well, there's an unrelenting focus on making sure that we're we're working towards you know helping people realize and fulfill their rights yeah. so you know that's kind of the space I'm really I'm really keen that we're we continue to be kind of bold we continue to be courageous as an organization mm -hmm. you know if things are not being said or done in an area where we see it as a priority what can we do in that space and and that's the kind of um that's the kind of direction I want us to be going in as an organisation. Yeah, which is fascinating as an intermediary organisation that we can have that lens. You know, I think it's, it's a fascinating space to hold, isn't yeah. it? Because you can, you can identify the gaps, as you say, yeah. and, and also um, realise the potential of, of kind of where it could, yeah. where it could go. Yeah. And I think that's the that's you know in some ways I guess it's the bit coming back to the humility mm -hmm. as a leader is mm -hmm. you know when you're in a privileged position that mm -hmm. you 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 know you are able to see patterns across you mm -hmm. know what members are telling us about you know you know what's happening across different policy silos um, the responsibility is also there therefore yeah. to do something with that knowledge yeah. to do something with that and um, you know so so I think I think that feels like the thing that. That, that I guess keeps me, holds me in the role mm. is mm. that, uh, you know, I recognise that responsibility and the, 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 the opportunity that I have. Um, so yeah. I'm determined that we, you know, we do good with that. Yeah, yeah. Sarah, is there anything else that you feel like, I don't know, you wanted to say that you haven't been able to or touch upon any kind of theme? Um, no, I don't think so. To close? I don't think so. It's been such a pleasure to sit down with you. You're amazing. Um, thank and you. thank you for your time. I know it's, it's very, very precious. So thank, thank you, so you much. Sarah. Thank you. Thank you for your reflections as well. It was, uh, uh, yeah, I really appreciate them. Brilliant. Thanks. If you enjoyed this, you can find all Alliance Live podcasts on all major podcast streaming services, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts and more. Alliance Live also produce webinars, video interviews and case studies. Watch these by visiting www.alliance-scotland.org.uk forward slash live. To follow along regularly with Alliance Live content, use the hashtag Alliance Live on X.